This week, the government announced plans to free up 50,000 hospital beds by discharging some patients early and monitoring their vital signs online from the comfort of their own homes. Right now, there are roughly 14,000 NHS hospital beds occupied by patients that don't need to be there. And that's just in England. It's one of the causes of the waiting list crisis we're currently facing, and it's taken around £2 billion of the NHS's budget every year. But the traditional hospital ward could be about to change from this to this. You're looking at a virtual ward where patients are monitored by a team of nurses and doctors, but all remotely. Dr. Rajiv Sankanara is a consultant cardiologist on the virtual ward. So the uh, virtual ward uh, essentially is about caring for patients in their homes safely and conveniently as an alternative to hospitalization. So heart failure is a condition which affects about a million people in the UK and contributes to about 10% of hospitalizations. Uh, the proportion of patients and in our experience about 40 to 50% of uh, people with acute heart failure can be managed safely and conveniently at home with uh, the aid of telehealth uh, technology essentially. So the sickest patients get the NHS beds. The patients who are less sick can be managed in a virtual ward environment. That telehealth technology is what this is all about. Remotely monitoring detailed vital signs like heart rate, temperature and blood pressure. Readings are measured by patients and then sent in. Julie is one of the nurses working on the virtual ward. Our role is to monitor the readings that the patients send in on a daily basis and to contact them, check they're okay if there are any abnormalities and offer them advice and support. Anything in red or amber tells us it's an alert, it's not normal, it's not usual and we need to take notice of what's on that information they submit. Just like in hospital, you can call a nurse. They provide patients with feedback based on their vitals. Um, it's quite busy this morning, it's, it's quite cold, so we've noticed some of the patients have got low temperatures on their readings. Some of them, when we contact them, do tell us that they haven't put their heating on yet because obviously they're concerned about costs. We try and encourage them to stay warm at all costs. As nurses, we get a lot of satisfaction out, out of the virtual wards. We know the patients are relieved to be at home, we can speak to them and we know their physical condition from the data that they're giving us. It's more, when we speak to them, it's more about the little softer symptoms that we're, we're getting. Colette Miele from Liverpool has Crohn's disease, a condition which affects the digestive system. And last year, she was diagnosed with heart failure. The heart failure um, can result in, for me, one of the most distressing things, which is um, problems with the breathing um, during the day. You find if you do the slightest thing at times, it can make you so tired. But now with the virtual ward, Colette's condition is constantly monitored. She's been on the ward for 11 months and uses equipment to monitor her vital signs, which are sent through to the telehealth clinical hub three times a day. One of my only hesitations, uh, if you like, was the fact that they mentioned remote monitoring. I'm a technophobe. Rather than the health side being worried about it, it was actually the technology side, which I was very quickly reassured about. Some people may be worried that not physically being in the hospital, you wouldn't get the same level of care. But Colette doesn't think that's the case. You can just pick up the phone and speak to the nurses if you have any worries or indeed the other way, if they're particularly worried about anything in your readings, then they can phone you. So to have this knowledge that you're being constantly monitored is such a confidence booster. Hello. Yeah. Hello. This is, oh. this is Julie from the NHS Telehealth. I'm just ringing because some of your readings are a bit off again. So I did another reading before and they've come up slightly. Okay. So the blood pressure's um, a bit better at the moment. Today, consultant Dr. Rajiv is doing his rounds, virtually. How is your breathing? Is it a bit better since we increased your water tablet? Uh, yes, there does seem to have been a slight improvement in it. The Merseycare Virtual Ward has had over a thousand patients, 
saving more than 6,500 acute bed days and over two and a half million pounds. There are over 50 virtual wards in England and they have also been adopted in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. There are plans to expand the scheme to include other medical conditions. You have a lovely day and weekend. Thank okay. you, okay. you too. Yes. And Bedside Manor is just as important as it's always been. So they're just so nice, you know, and because you speak to them fairly um, regularly, then uh, although you haven't met them, it's almost like a personal relationship has formed. I think it won't replace traditional medicine, uh, but I think it's having uh, the best of both. So I, I suspect it will be 50-50, where we have 50% uh, of patients who are suitable, who will be managed uh, in a heart failure virtual ward. The remaining 50% who are a lot sicker will still be in hospital. My quality of life has um, improved greatly because now I've got the diagnosis I know what it is, we know where we're going with it, but it's allowed me, rather than spending so much time in hospital, it's allowed me to get back to as much of a normal life as I had prior to being diagnosed with the condition. And that's one more bed free in hospital for someone else that desperately needs it.